It is the year 1846. It has been almost five months since we ran out of food. Everyone is thin and sickly. Not even the young children play. It is deathly quiet, as everyone is trying to conserve their energy in an effort to hold off the inevitable. Already people have died, and it is clear that more will be following them. The cold wind from outside the tent I'm currently residing in cuts through me, and I shiver. This cold is numbing, and I'm not sure how any of us can possibly hold out. Oh, how I missed the oxen. They had plenty of meat that I could eat. I needed food. 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 Food! That was all that I could think, other than thinking about the mind-numbing cold. The Donner Party, sometimes called the Donner Reed Party, was a group of American pioneers who migrated to California in a wagon train from the Midwest. Delayed by a series of mishaps, they spent the winter of 1846 to 1847 snowbound in the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Some of the migrants resorted to cannibalism to survive, eating the bodies of those who had succumbed to starvation and sickness. The Donner Party departed Missouri on the Oregon Trail in the spring of 1846, behind many other pioneer families who were attempting to make the same overland trip. The journey west usually took between four and six months, but the Donner Party was slowed after electing to follow a new route called the Hastings Cutoff which bypassed established trails and instead crossed the Rocky Mountains, Wasatch Range, and the Great Salt Lake Desert in present-day Utah. The desolate and rugged terrain and the difficulties they later encountered while traveling along the Humboldt River in present-day Nevada resulted in the loss of many cattle and wagons, and divisions soon formed within the group. By early November, the migrants had reached the Sierra Nevada but became trapped by an early, heavy snowfall near Truckee Lake, now Donner Lake high in the mountains. Their food supplies ran dangerously low, and in mid-December, some of the group set out on foot to obtain help. Rescuers from California attempted to reach the migrants, but the first relief party did not arrive until the middle of February, 1847, almost four months after the wagon train became trapped. Of the 87 members of the party, 48 survived the ordeal. Historians have described the episode as one of the most spectacular tragedies in California history and in the entire record of American westward migration. I wasn't the only one. Many people sat huddled similarly to me, and all were just as hungry. The snow seemed like it would never let up. This will be our icy tomb. Oh, how unfair this is. We did nothing wrong. We did nothing. And yet here we are, our only companions, each other, and the constant hunger gnawing at our bellies. Some men have gone mad and tried to eat things they find outside. Rocks, snow, and anything else that they manage to find in the bleak, white abyss. I feel that I will soon end up like them. As I anticipated, more men died. A man collapsed. His heart stopped. Never would he breathe again. Never would he feel the terrible, terrible cold. Never would he hunger. I was almost envious of him.
the Donner Pass summit tunnels of the Pacific Railroad. Here we are looking back at a historical achievement of Western America. Opened on November 30th, 1867, after two years of blasting, the 1,659 foot long summit tunnel number six at Donner Pass was used continuously for 130 years by the trains of the Central Pacific, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and Amtrak. It is now bypassed and sits idle. The 75 foot high lower Chinese wall supports the grade built to fill the ravine between tunnels number 7 and number 8. You can also see the upper wall supporting the embankment above the entrance to tunnel number 8. The tunnels and walls were built with Chinese labor, as was most of the Central Pacific Railroad.
California must have been an interesting place in pre-Columbian times. It was the most populated area on the continent and the most diverse ethnically and linguistically. There were nine language families in the Sierra alone. Native Americans left us a record of their presence in the Donner Summit area, petroglyphs. Although there are dozens of petroglyph sites on Donner Summit, the most accessible prehistoric rock art site is below Donner Pass on Old Highway 40 between Rainbow Bridge and the Chinese Wall. The petroglyphs here are hard to see, but fascinating. Archaeologists estimate that the petroglyphs in this area are between 1,500 and 4,000 years old. They were created by pecking through the surface of the glaciated bedrock using a tool called a hammerstone. Most are geometric shapes, wavy lines, circles, and zigzags. Human and animal forms such as stick figures and deer or bear tracks are less common. Although no one knows what the petroglyphs mean, many people believe they have spiritual or ceremonial significance. They are so difficult and time-consuming to make, they must have had great significance for the Mardis culture. The Mardis were possibly ancestors of the Washoe people of what is now Nevada, and it is they who created these petroglyphs. Like all Great Basin Indians, they were nomadic. The Washoe traveled all over the Sierra and used Donner Pass as a corridor for travel to and from Lake Tahoe. Adapted to life in the Great Basin and the Sierra, they made annual rounds hunting game, gathering and trading food, clothing materials, salt, and obsidian. They probably carried dry trout and pine nuts to eat, and they would have hunted. The Martyrs disappeared from Donner Summit about 500 AD. No one knows absolutely where they went or why, but just at that time, the bow and arrow arrived in the Donner Summit area, and with that must have come great disruption to the society. Native Americans were absent from Donner Summit for about 500 years until the King's Beach culture arrived to take up summer residence. The rock art sites are exposed to the harsh environment of the High Sierra. The natural process of exfoliation, peeling away of layers of rock due to the freezing and expansion of water, is at work on Sierra Granite. This leaves the petroglyphs fragile and vulnerable to destruction.